How can we deploy AI agents to production effectively? What are some of the common mistakes and how can we fix them? And what are some ways we can manage the cost? We're going to cover these questions in the 10th lesson of the AI Agents for Beginners course. In this course, we take you from concept to code covering the fundamentals of building AI agents. In this short video that follows along with the written lesson, including translations and code samples that you can find at the link above and below this video. But let's talk about getting AI agents into production and into our users and customers' hands. And that journey begins with evaluations of your AI agents. To evaluate AI agents properly, you need to look at the entire system that the AI agent operates in and set up evaluation points at each step. This includes, but not limited to, the initial request to the large language model or service, making sure you have a proper connection, response times, and model selection, and how this might affect, affect responses over time. Then the agent's ability to identify the intent of the user, which is helpful to make sure your agent has the ability to complete the task that's been requested. Then the agent's ability to identify the right tool to perform that task so that the agent is achieving the goal of the user. Also, the tool's response to the agent's request Things to consider here are any errors or malformed responses from those tools, or perhaps uptime issues with the service if you're using an external service. Then also being able to collect the feedback of the agent's response is also a part of evaluations. This includes providing a UI or feedback mechanisms in the UI, like a thumbs up, thumbs down, or how the users are satisfied with the responses, as well as using manual evaluation, as well as end LLMs to judge responses. And having evaluation at every step of the workflow enables us to both see changes over time and it allows us to make changes to our agentic system, things like changing the model or different services for tools and we can better identify the effects of these changes because we're evaluating at every step. And the next step of this lesson, like all the other lessons before it, is to head over to our code editor and see this in action. Okay, so welcome to chapter 10 and this code sample, which again can be found at the top of the GitHub repo, the link above and below this video. So you've probably seen this code or this sample before if you followed along with all of the lessons, because uh, we have this kernel function, this kernel function or function call that we have, which is about getting destinations. So these are destinations available. And we also have this get flight times. But the difference of this one, and I want to kind of mimic a scenario that you might experience when launching AI agents into production, is that when we make this call, we're actually going to get this HTTP error for a four, because uh, flight times are currently available. So again, if we're using a, an external service, we might experience this because Maybe our credentials are expired or the service is down. So we need to make sure that we have a way to then allow the agent to continue to operate and continue to use whatever tools that are available. In this case, we're essentially going to just replace that with a get flight times backup uh, that should have also the same, or uh, you know, the flight times that we expect uh, when a user asks that. Again, you can maybe even also add instructions on what, you know, even directing the agent if the service is down how to handle those errors. In this case, what we, we, we are going to do is, is actually define this get flight times function as well as this get flight times backup and define this as a backup function uh, for flight times. And then, you know, if flight time service is down, we're also going to make sure uh, that it knows that it can start using this backup flight times. So again, we're not uh, you know, uh, establishing these grand rules in terms of error handling. But you can do that in terms of especially when you're operating with multiple different services out there. So what this interaction should look like is, you know, we have this user input, which is book me a flight to Barcelona. So again, this is the request from the user. And we can actually see a drill down here about the function calls that it makes. So first, it's going to try the get flight times. 
uh, you know, passing in the destination Barcelona. And what whoa, whoa, we get this HTTP 444 error. So the next request is to get flight times back up, which luckily that service isn't down or has no errors. So then we're going to get this flight times back up and these flight times and be able to send that to the user. So this is just one scenario and one type of um, you know, scenario that you should prepare for when you're working with AI agents in production. We have, have a list in the written lesson of other things that you might want to look out for when launching AI agents in production. And this will conclude, at least in our initial chapters, so uh, 10 lessons on AI agents for beginners. But we wish you the best of luck and we will continue to improve this course and add more materials as the world of AI agents continues to expand. But thank you for watching the lessons. Thank <laughs> you.